Hey, everybody. It's the Pregame Show Network. Once again, I'm Tali Carr at home today, Neely at home. Uh, we're, we're just on this at home, at home broadcast here, Neely. Uh, listen, man, uh, the doors to our houses swing both ways. Sometimes we're on campus. Sometimes we're on the, in the studio. Uh, that portal door swings both ways. We've been talking about uh, the comings and goings that will be on the way uh, as that portal opened this week. Uh, a big one was announced this week, and it was an outgoing, not an incoming. Cormani McLean, uh, the five-star cornerback, uh, he flipped to Colorado last year, uh, played, had an up-and-down season, but announced he is headed to the transfer portal. Uh, Neely, your your kind of takeaway, what, what, what can you tell me about that situation? Well, first thing, let's just peel back the layers of this onion and look at the portal itself from 30,000 foot kind of view. You know, I said uh, back in February that when we got to April, when we got to mid-April, as we started getting close to the spring game, you were going to see that portal door first swing on the outward direction before you saw people coming in. Uh, and so that's just part of college football. It is certainly part of college football in Colorado. And the reason I was forecasting that to happen mid-April before the portal officially opened and when it officially would open is that I understood based on our calendar that that was going to put players in a position to see where they really stacked up, uh, you know, because you would have had, uh, two weeks of practice under your belt. You'd have film meetings and strength and conditioning going on. And so you would truly begin to have a sense of where you fit in or don't fit in in this program going forward. Uh, and I think that's what has happened uh, as you reach the middle of April uh, again, prior to the portal officially open, and now that it's been open, you know, now about 24 hours, you, this is just the natural thing of it. Having said that, there's no program in America that gets the attention when somebody leaves that Colorado gets. And it's just part of being in a coach prime Deion Sanders universe. Anything that happens in this space, you know, is magnified. Uh, even players who are walk-ons, when they transfer, it gets discussed ad nauseum. That's something that does not happen in other programs. Nobody counts walk-ons departing. Uh, but in the case of uh, Carmine McClain, you know, it was a big splash when he signed to come to Colorado, I think flipping from Miami. And of course, it was going to be a big splash when he left because this was the number one player at his position in the nation. So it was going to make news, even amplified news with him playing for Deion Sanders. But I say the same thing I say about all the transfers. One of the things you have to look at, Tali, is what did they bring to the program while they were with the program numbers wise? Uh, and that's not an insult to any player. That's just so fans and supporters, boosters, anywhere around the world can measure what you're really losing when somebody transfers. Uh, Neely, you know, people love to talk about five star, you know, four star uh, coming out of high school. But I mean, the, the, the fact of the matter is, like once you get there, those stars don't mean nothing. Like you, you got to show who you are as a college player, who you were as a high school player. And I'm not picking on any one person, but it's like sure. the, the, that five star doesn't doesn't give you a, a four year pass at, at any place. No, I think that's that's spot on. You know, college athletics is annual at best. That's the pass you have is this one year when you're a scholarship player. And I think that sometimes players come in with these five four. Uh, even three stars in reverse, because sometimes you have three stars that come out of spring camp looking like five stars. And sometimes you have fives that come out looking like twos. Uh, you know, Kermani McLean, as we talk about that particular transfer portal opening, you know, got here last May, just under uh, 11 months ago. There were some growing pains. You know, has he got augmented and uh, 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 start to affiliate himself with the team and, and the growing pains of strength and conditioning? in general, but particularly in this atmosphere. And I think whether it was on the pregame show or reach the people or well-off media, you know, some of that was pretty documented, the growing pains he was experiencing, you know, that summer as a freshman. Uh, and then when the fall season came, you know, he did be, he was able to get into some games, but didn't have a lot of impact. So, you know, just totally wishing him well, you know, he as he goes forward to seek another college opportunity somewhere. But this is college football. You know, in 2024, for the foreseeable future, you're going to have big names that sign with you and you're going to have big names that leave you. I will say this to you, Tali, uh, and to, to the audience out there. You know, there are these lists that come out of the biggest players who have hit the portal, you know, the teams who are losing the most. As we do this broadcast together, Colorado still hasn't made that list 
on the number of players who were leaving and the impact that they had of the players who were leaving and that they're, you know, uh, highly talented to go somewhere else. Uh, we've had right now, I think, 10 hit the portal. And of that 10, there were some who had playing time. Uh, but the impact that they had on the team this past season, you know, was not something that the other programs are losing numbers wise. And, and it really, and you you just spoke to this, Neely, but uh, just to emphasize it, I mean, it's the transactional nature of of college football. And it's, a you know, part of it, you tell me what you think, a byproduct of, okay, we have, you know, collectives, name, image, likeness. There's a lot of money out there. It's starting to feel more professional. And, and if you receive professional benefits, <laughs> at some point, you got to accept professional responsibilities. Absolutely. Uh, I think programs around the country, and I can say specifically this program here in Colorado under head coach Deion Sanders, Coach Prime, there's a couple of questions he asked of himself, asked of his coaches around the table. Who in the building can help us now? Who in the building can help us with development? And if you can't check one or two of those boxes, there's no doubt about it, you're going to come to an impasse where we have to part ways. Because college football is a now thing, and there's a little bit of gray area for development. Uh, but either way, you're going to have to be able to have an impact on that team. And if you don't have an impact and you sit there a year or two and you're still not playing, uh, I heard Carl Reed, our brother from the big boys, say it the other day. You know, guys who are somewhere and haven't played in two years, they're going to start looking for opportunities to have to go somewhere else because it's just clear that you're not clicking in that program opportunity-wise to get to the field. Uh, and so growing pains aside, whether it's, you know, homesickness being far from home, not living up to expectations, whether those expectations were on the school side or the player side, this is going to continue to happen in college football. And, and the good thing about it, Neely, is we have seen over and over people get fresh starts in new locations and really live up to their potential, able to continue their dreams. Um, so I, I don't think there needs to be this stigma, you know, either for the school or the player. If if you made a move, that's just, you know, how it is. You know, uh, other than the gravitas, the magnetism, the gravitational pull of Coach Prime, it really is a non-issue. Uh, you look at what Joe Burrow was able to do when he left Ohio State and went to LSU. Uh, you look at Jalen Hurts and what he was able to do when he left Alabama and went to uh, Oklahoma. This happens in college football, and it doesn't mean something is wrong with the program. Clearly, there was nothing wrong with Ohio State. There was nothing wrong with Alabama, just like there's nothing wrong you know, in Colorado. It's just a player seeking more additional, better opportunity, whatever that may look like to that player. And so they decide to transfer. It doesn't mean they're damaged good. It doesn't mean they're not going to have an impact where they go. It doesn't mean they're not going to end up in the NFL. All the things that were touted before they came to that particular school still end up happening. They just happen from another venue. So, Neely, uh, great points there. Tell the people again, you said it's going to swing outward first. Again, your anticipation of when that door will start to swing inward. Uh, I would say this week. Uh, I would certainly say before the spring game, uh, you know, which is now about two weeks away, just under two weeks away, uh, you know, this is just the nature of it. You have people leave before people arrive. And I've always put our number somewhere between 10 and 15 people leaving. I think as we sit today, we're at 10. Uh, I will anticipate another, you know, five to say seven who will make that decision based on how they prepare for the spring game, based on how they even participate in the spring game. You have until April 30th, you know, to enter the portal and the spring game is on the 27th. And I think these last few practices in Colorado, as well as that game itself, is going to tell players here where they sit opportunity wise with the program. Uh, you know, let me let me offer you this, Tyler, when you talk about positions uh, and uniqueness and, and just the way things add up. You have arguably the best NFL player of all time in Deion Sanders. You certainly have the number one cornerback in, in football history, Deion Sanders. You have Coach Kevin Mathis, uh, who played 10 plus years in the NFL, coaching the secondary. You have uh, Robert Livingston, the defensive coordinator, 12 years with the Bengals, uh, coaching the cornerbacks and then the scout team. If you're playing cornerback and you're in this environment and you don't make it, it can't stick here. That just tells you a lot right there because the guys who I just mentioned, you know, Deion Sanders, his experience, Kevin Mathis, his experience, 
Coach Robert Livingston, his experience, they know what players they need on defense, particularly at corner, to hit the field. And if you're not one of those guys, you're just not one of those guys. That could be because of missed meetings. That could be because of work ethic. That could be because of homesick. That could be because of grade issues. That could just be because you couldn't pick up the scheme. There are a thousand different reasons that don't necessarily mean there's something wrong with the player and certainly don't mean there's something wrong with the program. This is the transactional nature, as you put it, of college football in 2024. People are going to leave. People are going to come. And and Neely, if you talk about you know your NFL dreams, it's it's a good thing to to be in that NFL environment uh, with coaches who have NFL experience and either figure out, hey, I got to step it up, or this might not happen at all. Uh, no, no one will be led on <laughs> that they're going to the league uh, coming through that coaching staff. That's one of the things I love about this program. You know, Coach Prime uh, daily throughout the day you know, stands before the team or different position groups. The position uh, coaches do the same thing. You know where you stand in this program. Nobody is holding the carrot on a stick in front of you and misleading you. Uh, you know what you need to do to, to be impactful on this team. You know what you need to do to help us win now. You know what you need to do to help us win with some development. And if we don't check those two boxes, then it is just inevitable that the player will end up making the decision, well, I need to go somewhere else because the opportunity here is not what I thought it would be. And that is no animosity. You've never heard Coach Prime badmouth a player or a coach that left his program. And I don't think he ever will because it's nothing to badmouth. There's nothing to have disparaging remarks about somebody. Certain things don't work in certain environments, and it's just that simple. And, and Neely, you don't have to be a, an NFL, you know, prospect or in a, you know, guaranteed to to be playing on Sundays to contribute and be successful within the program, right? Like, not everybody's going to go. No, not at all. You have to first understand that the majority of people playing college football will never play in the NFL. That's why Coach Prime says his emphasis is on making these young men professionals at whatever they choose, not just professional football players. Uh, you also have to consider that there's a coaching aspect to this thing. Uh, a lot of coaches with the collectives and the NILs are going after the five stars and going after the guys who are hardly touted. At some point, that market it doesn't exist. At some point, you have to sign a two or three star and you have to coach them up to be a five star. But the reality mm -hmm. is there are certain players that bring certain things to the table that don't work for certain coaches or organizations, and it just doesn't mesh. And God bless the transfer portal that kids can now go seek another opportunity somewhere else instead of being personally miserable where they are. I don't have a problem with the portal. I don't have a problem with kids who choose to go to the portal because I think America uh, uh, is, is built on the premise of opportunity, you know, for you to succeed and you need to be able to find that somewhere else. So you never hear, you know, a kid being kicked down or beat down because he decided to leave. We're going to applaud them when they come. We're going to applaud them when they leave. Land of the free, home of the brave. Uncle Nick. That's the, <laughs> That's uh, the pl Players that come in prior to the spring game, uh, do you think – You tell, tell me how it's going to work. Will they immediately be in pads and participating? Uh, will they be watching? Like, like how do you assimilate people? And, and you've seen this before, you know, even at Jackson State and Colorado. Like, how does that process work when you're coming in late? Uh, well, you come in late, you're going to be after Memorial Day or that Memorial Day weekend. Uh, when you really start to Im immerse yourself in the team. Uh, there are unofficial visits taking place in April as well as official visits. So you'll have people coming to the spring game, uh, coming in this weekend, the week prior to the spring game, uh, and, and touring the school and meeting with coaches and seeing if they want to transfer here. And that's why I know that there will be announcements in the days to come uh, of people who are deciding to come here. Uh, they won't instantly impact the team because – this spring semester, you know, you're already in school. So your next opportunity to come to this school will be in the summer sessions and the fall. So this team will have new members uh, going into uh, to the 1st of June. And this team will have new members going into the 1st of uh, August with both of those camps starting. So the, just because you got somebody leave, Tyler, doesn't mean nobody else is coming. You know, I remember Aaron Rodgers having a press conference years ago when he said R E. L A X, relax. <laughs> Neely, how do you spell that stuff he takes down in the cave? Can, can you spell that? <laughs> 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 
or can you spell hallucinate? H A L L U N I C A T E. I know what it is. Right. Too many letters. Uh, Nate, I, I, hey, I, if I was if I was wrong, I'll hear about it in the comments. Oh yeah, yeah. It let you know. <laughs> I, I'm letting you know. I don't know if you spelled it right or not, Tyler. <laughs> it, it's, hey, man. it's like when uh, Howard Cosell accused Muhammad Ali of being truculent. And I, I at least said, I don't even know what that means, but it sounds good. If it's great, I'm there. <laughs> oh, there's only one champ. Only, only one champ. Uh, how, do, how does Coach Prime, um, is his, or or the coaching staff and, and all the people, wrist press, like everybody who, who is recruiting, you know, when these players come in and they're already college players and, and you know their transfer portal, do, do they get that same treatment like you might try to court a high school senior or is it more like, all right, you got to know the game. You know what it is like roll with this or not. Like, like what is that recruitment like for, for people that are in the portal versus high school? Uh, is it the same different? Uh, I I think that much of it is, is the same because it's coming from a place of honesty. Uh, we're not guaranteeing people playing time. We're not guaranteeing people will start. We're not guaranteeing people, you know, a certain number and that kind of thing. Uh, you get here and you earn all that. Uh, what we are guaranteeing you is the opportunity uh, to be successful, the opportunity to become a professional, the opportunity to play football at the next level. And there's no better environment of professionals uh, on a staff to learn how to play at the next level than here. So whether you're talking to a high schooler uh, or a transfer, that message is the same. I think, though, there's an emphasis on it with the transfers because, of course, their window of time is slimmer. So if you have a guy who's a grad transfer and he has one year to play somewhere and one year to show that he should be playing on Sundays next year, you know, what better place than Colorado? Because the eyes of the world are on Colorado football. So if you're playing in the trenches, let's say the defensive side of the ball and our inability to truly stop the run last year and you come in and you make that impact. Let's say you're in the trenches on the offensive side of the ball and our inability to protect Shadur Sanders, you come in and make a difference. This this program is going to be watched and, and talked about every weekend in the fall of 2024 through the bowl games. What better place to come and play when you're a guy that needs to make some noise for one year or two years to try to go to the league? So I think the message is the same for, you know, for high schoolers or, or for transfers in that regard, that this is truly a place of opportunity to become a professional and who better to learn from than the best have ever done it. And that's what this staff is made up of. And according to Neely, no better place. There are no mosquitoes and no roaches in, in I, Colorado. I say, Tyler, look, let me tell you this. If it is, it's just because they avoided me. I ain't seen a roach. I ain't seen a mosquito. <laughs> now they might've had a meeting and said, Hey y'all, Neely got enough roaches and mosquitoes away from let's, let's cool out. He didn't earn some time off. If they not hooking up doing that, they just say, "Here, yeah, I ain't seen them." Understanding the laws of Colorado, Neely, there are some roaches there. They might oh, not be crawling. Oh, 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 <laughs> and every ashtray in this state, there is a roach somewhere. So, just for clarification, <laughs> yeah. we we talking about the ones with legs. Sometimes they even fly at you. <laughs> An antenna. Yes, uh, Neely. Spring game coming up. Uh, is the hype leading up to it appropriate? Is it kind of under the radar? Or what, what do you think? This this upcoming I, spring I, game. I think the hype leading up is is appropriate. And I think it's going to crescendo at the right time. Uh, you know, the only reason this game is is not on ESPN is we happen to have our spring game the week of the NFL draft, uh, and so of course naturally the NFL draft is going to be covered by ESPN extensively. Uh, and so other than that. That's the only thing you're missing, but it will be covered live by the Pac-12 network. The pregame show will be doing live shows that that uh, week and weekend. Uh, you got Lil Wayne coming in for a concert, uh, you know, for the students. You got a fashion show. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, you have a talent show that Coach Prime is putting on, you know, for the area with a $2,100 prize. I think you can figure out why it's a $2,100 prize. 21, uh, 21, 21. Fundraising dinner with the Collective Alliance on Friday night where you have dinner with – you know, some of the key players and coaches, a uh, big, fu big fundraising opportunity, a big alumni weekend. I don't think it's underhyped at all. You know, anytime you got Lil Wayne coming to something, it's pretty damn big. I mean, he was just at WrestleMania. He he came out with uh, Jay Uso. He came out with Jay, right? Yeah. 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 yeah came out with Jay Uso. Ain't bad so. coming out with her. 
What? 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 Back up. Coming out with who? You you I was thinking about Cargill. You said uh I was thinking about the, the diva. Oh oh no 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 he he came out with the male Jay Uso nearly. Uh, I was thinking I, I I my my fixation is on the diva side, so I thought you were saying he yeah. brought her. Well that that wouldn't have been a bad one either. That's she why is. I said it ain't, a, it ain't a bad one to bring out. I, I need a workout plan, man. She when she God boy, she oh I don't need that a was... plan. I just need her to keep doing what she's doing. You go get it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, a big a big gap to fill. Uh, Rhea Ripley announced that she was vacating the title. She's going to be out with the injury for a while, so uh, a chance for for one of those divas to, to step up. There, there's a void there in in the wrestling universe at, at the highest level. So it'll be interesting to see how that uh, pans out there. And, uh, and we'll, speaking of, speaking of the highest level, we went from roaches the insect to roaches the leftover residue. <laughs> All the way to WrestleMania and Divas and Lil Wayne. Where else in the pregame show network can you get that? Ain't no, ain't no other broadcast can pivot uh, like that. It, it is a stream of consciousness uh, with with me and you. Uh, so it, it is what it is. I, I hope the people enjoy it. But uh, it's, it's like that when we talk, man. Uh, yeah, if, if if Neely calls me, I know. Or if, if I call Neely, vice versa. Set aside an hour. We're gonna we're gonna wrap. We can um, we can call each other for one thing, and we're gonna talk about forty four other things before we get off on. Exactly, and, and the one time me and Neely fell out, <laughs> I called Neely, and he didn't have time to talk to me, and I got in my feelings. That was the only time. <laughs> and and, and that was a uh, that was a Super Bowl Sunday, and I was managing the cigar shop. <laughs> and I'm he just said, calling. Hey, I want to talk. I said, you know, this is our busiest day and weekend of the year. <laughs> And that, that's how you do your boy. You call him when you know he's busy and expect him to stop what he's doing just to talk to you. And I, I, I don't think I really had anything to talk about. I just wanted to talk. <laughs> <laughs> so lesson learned. Don't call Neely on Super Bowl Sunday. All right, man. Uh, I do have a feeling we'll be talking later this week and talking on air with America here because uh, as you have promised, you, you expect some some more names to drop on the incoming side before another seven days pass as, as we sit here in the middle of the week. Absolutely. You know, we got to keep in mind the, the portal, you know, from about April 16th to April 30th is a living being. There are people right now on their respective college campuses may have just got done with a workout, may have just had a great experience, may have just had a bad experience, and they're going to be in the portal soon and they don't even know it themselves yet. Uh, so this thing has to completely you know, shake loose. You have until April 30th to enter it. You don't have to be picked up by April 30th. So it goes past that as far as landing somewhere. And we still have needs here. You know, we want some more depth uh, at defensive line. We want some more depth at offensive line. Uh, We'd like to add a veteran quarterback uh, into that room. Uh, I'd like to add a linebacker uh, as well. So I think the portal is going to continue to produce names that we'll be looking at and reviewing that film. And it's also going to produce people who want to exit and try an opportunity somewhere else. But I think when the dust settles, Tali, this team is going to be better because of the portal, not worse because of it. It's called addition via subtraction. And so it is straight from the mouth of Uncle Neely. You heard it here on the pregame show network. We'll be talking to you guys soon. Uh, The portal will be busy. Got scrimmages still to come. Spring game still to come. So a lot of news in the air with Colorado football. It's it's a subject you guys love to hear about 365 days a year. So who are we to deny you the conversation? So look for more of that right here on the Big Game Show Network. Get the people people what what they they want. want. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. All right, Neely. Enjoyed it, man. Uh, Enjoy the rest of your day, brother. We'll talk to you soon.